Hey ladies, welcome to another episode of the Revitalized Womanhood Podcast, my Friday episode to the core, where I just share all the thoughts that are just bubbling around in my head. And today my thoughts are centered around why family-centric women, women who prioritize family, working moms, stay-at-home moms, um, why women who value family should still attend retreats, should still prioritize networking events, prioritize communities, finding a community to be part of, why this is so important. So let me start in case you haven't heard my story of how this all began and not necessarily how this all began. I've got my headphones on today. I haven't worn them for a long time, but I just got done recording a podcast episode and uh, our our uh, equipment wasn't working, so I had to put on put on the old headphones. So here we are again. Anyway, okay. So not how Revitalized Women had started, but how I started in my journey towards creating a community for women and and onward, right? So where it all began was it was really interesting. After my third baby, he's <clears throat> three and a half, <clears throat> so about three and a half years ago, <laughs> I suffered postpartum depression for the first time. And now I don't necessarily know that that has to do with it. So it's funny that I say that, but it was a moment in my life where I, yeah, it does because I didn't feel confident. I didn't feel like myself. So I'm going to take that back. It absolutely was because of this. I didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel like, and honestly, who knows if that stuff carries over from past babies, past things, but I've always felt very confident about who I am and my beliefs. And, you know, this is Gina, this is what I believe I can stand up to you with whatever you say and, and come at you with my own argument and, and feel confident in that. But after this third baby, I was kind of just, it kind of rocked me. I kind of didn't want to leave this little island that I had created for myself and this new little baby. And that, that meant even the first time having to leave this bed. I mean, gosh, they had to kick me out after five days at the hospital. They're like, really? You don't want to leave yet? And I'm like, no, please don't make me leave. So once I got home, it was, it was honestly, we kind of settled into our own routine of, I didn't leave the bed. I had a C-section, so it, I couldn't leave the bed really. I mean, it was a lot to do that. So we just kind of made this our island and I would just snuggle this baby and sleep and nurse and heal. And Rick, Rick really was pulling a lot of his weight to take, take care of the other two boys. I, I'm sure I was there as well. I honestly, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember much of it. But there was this one moment when I remember thinking, I have to get out of this bed. And if I don't, this, this is one of these catalyst moments. This is one of this, it was like a crossroads. And I thought, if I don't get out of this bed, if I don't make myself go do something, I don't think I even had anything to do. I think I just thought I'm going to go to Kohl's, to the store. I just, I have to put this baby, the thought of putting this baby in his car seat, in the car, and then going somewhere and having to get him out and get the stroller out and do all of these things by myself, it was terrifying. It was, it was almost paralyzing. It was really, really weird to be this kind of a person was completely opposite of the person who I had always been. So I convinced myself and my husband, I don't even think he knows this was going on. I don't think he had any idea. I don't think he probably listens to this, me sharing this. And he's like, really, this, really, <laughs> this was a thing. So I, I have a picture now of this moment and I, it was COVID still. So we, I have the mask on, I just put on a hat. I just pulled on whatever yoga, you know, yoga joggers I could put on over my, you know, my, um, what were they called? The always like Depensy underwear -y things that I'm still wearing because my C-section scar and bleeding and just having a baby and all the things. Put on whatever I can put on and just kind of a cute jacket and put on some cute Nikes and a, and a hat and then my mask. You know, I just kind of, I didn't put on any makeup. I didn't really do my hair. I just kind of got to enough of a point where I didn't feel completely horrific to go out of the house. And I took a picture of myself in the mirror at Kohl's of this is a moment that I want to remember. I want to remember this moment that I, I did this. This was really hard. 
I had to battle a lot of limiting beliefs going on in my own head that I was creating and, and actually do this very simple thing, very, very simple in any other situation, very simple thing. And so that was kind of the kickoff to this journey of, I don't want to ever feel alone like that again. I don't, I know there's other women who feel this way. I would like to talk to the other women who have felt this way. I would like to encourage other women who have felt this way. A few other situations happened in that time, like um, trying to work out after a C-section, after you've been physically fit your entire life and, and focused heavily on fitness and prioritized core strength. And now all of a sudden I can't even do a crunch. That, that kind of stuff really messes with you. Anyway, how does this have to do with networking and communities? Well, we'll get to it. So my journey began and I started feeling like, and honestly, this probably does have a lot to do with coming out of COVID as well. All of us being, um, in lockdown for that year, just probably coming out of that was just this desire to be in a community, to be part of something bigger than just me, of women who are going through the same kinds of things and talking about these kinds of things. And I wanted that. So interestingly enough, I, while we were in quarantine, I started watching, I was so morning sick and I started watching my friend Ashley do these, um, makeup tutorials, get ready with me. Um, she does, she sells Saint makeup. And so I started watching her do these because they were so peaceful to me. They were so like, uh, it would take my mind off the morning sickness and the fact that we were stuck in a cabin, which was beautiful. Don't get me wrong. That was, that was a great part of it, but just stuck, right? We couldn't go anywhere. So we were stuck. And so I would watch her do these, these tutorials. Well, so then I'm like, well, I hated this makeup before, but I still have my palette that I bought four years ago, I'm going to get it out and start playing with it. I'm going to mess around with it. I'm going to do blah, 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 blah. So that got me on my journey to becoming a saint artist. And then um, as soon as quarantine had lifted, they had their first event since COVID and it was in San Diego. And I'm like, Hey, well, I just became an artist. I want to go to this event. This sounds amazing. I'm going to do it. Let's go. So I jumped on that, that bandwagon and went, and it was an amazing event. It was so good that it was such a great event. I had an amazing time. I met some really incredible women and that's where my journey began. Uh, it was not the community that I was looking for, which is fine. You'd never know unless you go. But I, like I said, I had an amazing time. It opened my eyes up to so many new concepts and new perspectives and new, just lots of new, honestly, lots of growth happened there. And, um, it opened me up to a, a new author, a new public speaker. And, and I've, I still follow her, the author, um, Kendra, I still follow her and I love all of her work. And anyway, so it kind of set me on this journey of, oh, this was good. I want to find better. I want to find what actually is like me, what, what is speaking to me. And so I did not find something for me. It was brought to me, actually. I think my husband knew I was on this journey and it was brought to me. So I was asked to start my own women's community. And because of how excited I was and passionate already about finding a community to be part of, the fact of the 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 concept and the idea of starting my own and making it exactly what I wanted it to be and for the women exactly I wanted to love on and bring together and support and be the hype girl for was just like yes uh yeah that's absolutely definitely what I want so when i first started i went to my very first retreat after starting this business and starting my podcast and my first retreat uh wasn't a retreat it was an event it was called uh, unstoppable and Jennifer Nelson put on this event in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it was incredible. It was incredible. It was a lot of amazing women brought together, uh, such incredible speakers. I mean, I still have the ringed binder. I actually printed off their material and put it into a, like a spiral ringed binder and stuff. <laughs> And I still have it. I have all of the the speakers and I took notes on all of the speakers. I am great friends with a lot of the speakers now. Very good friends with the woman who put it on. I just came alive. I went to their 
first night, their networking event, the, um, the first night, and it was incredible. I met some amazing women who to this day, I am still great friends with. And I left that event with so much more to my story, so much more of what my journey was going to look like. It it was just, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. It was just, it was just really cool. So I had always before this, I'd just been a stay at home mom, right? I say just, but then I hate that word, but I had just been a stay at home mom. I had been, yes, I had jobs. Yes, I took care of our vacation rentals and I was the travel mama. And yes, I have all of these other things, but that was my kind of my identity. I was a wife and a mother. It wasn't um, Gina the woman. I kind of stopped educating myself after college and because why, why would I continue? I don't need it. I'm a mom. I'm a, I'm a housewife. I, you know, managing my vacation rentals. I just figured that stuff out on my own. I didn't need college for that. I just did it myself, those kinds of things. And um, remodeling our, our condos. I learned that all along the way. So it wasn't anything like, like I continued this education and Rick used to come to me and he'd say, Oh, you need to read this book. Oh, you need to read Tim Ferriss. Oh, you need to read, uh, Dale Carnegie. Oh, you need to read, right. James Clear. You need to read. And I was just like, no, ew, that sounds so awful to me. That sounds so boring. And, and maybe at the time, if I would have started reading, I I'm, I'm, sad that I didn't start reading it back then, but maybe at the time it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have had an effect on me yet. Maybe, maybe I needed to become the person that I needed to become to be able to, uh, really, really appreciate and, 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 and want these, these, this material and this kind of wisdom and knowledge and that kind of thing. So, I mean, really we, we become the people we are because of the journey we're on and because of the decisions we make. So that's where I am now. So in starting my community, that's what I wanted to bring to these women. I wanted to bring books because I had started reading these titles that Rick had tried to get me to read before I had started reading and they were blowing my mind. They were blowing my mind before I'd just been reading like the teenage, you know what they are. I mean, right now it's the roses and thorns series. And before that, I'm sure it was something else, Shannara. And before that, it was something else. I was just constantly in these books that were um, make-believe, right? And 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 wonderful. Like, I love those books. I think they're amazing. Um, the Lux series. Oh, I love the Lux series. Like, all of these, these, these books that were so fun to read, but were not doing anything as far as my own work on myself and my own journey and looking into why I thought the way I did or, or why I parented the way I did or why I was the kind of wife that I was, or how can I be better? How can I be better at all of these things? How can I be a better woman? How can I be a better wife? How can I be a better mother? Right? These kinds of things, being aware, being mindful. And, and so I did start did start reading all of these different books and it was just blowing my mind. So of course I wanted to incorporate this into my community. So once a month we read a new title, like right now we're reading The Mountain Is You and it is blowing all of our minds. It is incredible. If you have a chance to read that book, please read that book by Brianna Weist. And and we've read so many. We've been open since October of 2022 and we read a new book every month. So think about it. Every month we read a new book that is not just fun to read. It's actually helping us be better people, helping us be better women, better wives, better mothers, helping us be better as human beings, right? So anyway, my journey began and I was off and I've attended retreats. I've attended events. I love them. I cannot say, say more about them. I think that's incredible to get out and network with other women and just talk, just be interested in what other people have to say and be curious about their stories. That's one of my most favorite parts about having a podcast is I get to sit here and talk to women that I would have never been able to talk to that I would have never talked to before and pick their brains and talk to them and get like basically the cheat codes on on how to be a great woman, how to be a great wife, how to be a great business owner, how to be right. I get the cheat codes from them. 
It's like I get to have my own little mentorships and I get to share that with you, my listeners. So the reason I'm saying this is I have always, 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 if you've been here long enough to hear me, I've always talked about, I love it. I encourage you, please, please, please look up women's events in your area. They don't have to be expensive. A lot of them, especially like the Chamber of Commerce will host once a month. You can pay for your lunch. It's 20 bucks and go to an event and they will have a really cool speaker or um, and you can network with other women in your area. You can look up mommy and me groups. You can look up book clubs. You can look up anything like this to find your people. I want you to find your people that inspire you and encourage you to be a better, better version of yourself, right? And to in, be able to learn how to enjoy this life that we're living and not just let it pass by you. Just like on this hamster wheel of now I wake up, now I get the kids ready for school, now I take the kids to school, now I come home, now I do the laundry, now I clean the kitchen, now I clean the bathrooms, now I do the laundry again, now I go pick up the kids from school, now I come home, right? That's such a hamster wheel version of life when you could be fully embracing all of the things that are actually happening in what I just described as things that bring you joy and reasons to celebrate or whatever. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting off the topic a little. Anyway, so I had one of the women in the Revitalized Sisterhood, our private coaching community, tell me a story yesterday about her very first networking event that she went to that I encouraged her to go to that I, same thing, I said, go to an event, find these events in your area, go network with women, go figure out what you want to do. Um, with moving forward in your career path, if you want to change careers, if you want to stay in this career, like what, what do you want to do? Just go and just open yourself up to new ideas and new perspectives of anything. Does, you don't have to own a business. You don't have to be looking to be a businesswoman. You just go meet interesting people. And um, you can't even believe how many opportunities Rick and I have created for ourselves just by talking to people, just by being friendly and saying, oh, hey, where are you from? Hey, you know, we talk to everybody. We talk all the time. But so she was telling me all about this event that she went to and how amazing it was and how she was just had this idea in her head that it would be all of these women that would be mean or that would not want to help her, that would not be interested in anything she had to say. And what she has to say as a mom would be so uninteresting. And I'm like, you have a story. You are interesting. You have things to share. You have insight. You have, you have your own set of really cool things that can be shared. And she went to this event and she said, it was so incredible. It was so fun. I got a lot of compliments on my blazer and I got to meet a lot of amazing women. And I, I realized that my story is important and what I'm saying and what I'm doing and what, what's going on in my life is important. And, and I'm not alone in it. Other women are feeling the same way or other women have gone through the same thing and they were willing to help me. And they, she says, I got all these business cards for these women I'm going to connect with later. And then I got connected with this other woman, completely other state. And she wants to help me. And, and her like eyes were just open to this whole new world of possibilities, not just for her business, but as a woman, as creating new friendships as opening the door for, hey, maybe now I'm going to go with this woman. We're going to meet up and go on a girl's weekend. Maybe we're going to meet up and go together to this retreat, this really cool retreat in Sedona. Or maybe um, her husband has something that's really cool and it connects to something my husband does. Networking is the lifeblood. Networking is the reason for living. I swear to you. You can get so much just from being curious about why somebody's at a restaurant sitting next to you. Rick and I hear people with accents and we're like, where are you from? We want to know where you're from. We were at New Year's Eve and we, we met some people and we had just gotten back from our six-month trip, our international six-month trip that we had just been on. And we... we said, where are you from? And they said, Latvia. And we're like, oh my gosh, we were just in Latvia. That's so cool. And we were able to show them pictures that we were where we were at in Latvia. And it was just really cool. Um, anyway, 
So I do have some three reasons. We'll we'll come back here and kind of wrap this up, but I do have three reasons why family-centric women should embrace networking events and retreats. So empowerment through connection. Networking events offer a space where you can connect with like-minded women who understand the joys and challenge, challenges of balancing family and personal growth. Sharing stories, tips, and, and support in, in, in all of the things can spark a fire within you, empowering you to dream bigger and reach higher, whatever that means. Whatever that means. If you want to, you homeschool your kids and you want to join a co-op and maybe you want to teach, be one of the teachers. If you want to speak at your church uh, retreat that they have or their, their revival that they have, you want to present and be a speaker. You want to grow an amazing garden. There are women that will network with you. I had one of my good friends at our last retreat last year teach homemaking. And she taught us how to make bread, homemade bread and homemade jam. Amazing. That's so cool. That is so cool. That is just a really cool skill to have. All right. Second, personal growth beyond motherhood. By stepping out of your daily routine, attending retreats or events can provide valuable opportunities for personal growth and self-discovery. Engaging in conversations outside the realm of family life can reignite your passions can boost your confidence and help you nurture your individual identity alongside your familial roles, roles. You get to figure out who you are as a woman, who you are separate from being an amazing mother, separate from being an amazing wife. You get to, you get to say, oh my gosh, I just read that book. That was so interesting. I really loved how he talked about X, Y, Z, or I just got done having this conversation in the revitalized sisterhood community. We were talking all about this. We were just joining each other in a devotional call and we were talking about this scripture and it really spoke to me. You have very interesting things to share to add to conversations, get out there and do it, flex those muscles. The only reason it feels uncomfortable is because you haven't done it for so long. You haven't allowed yourself to do it. I don't just go run a marathon. I train to run a marathon each day. I run a little further and then the next day I run a little further and then the next day I run a little further. I train for it. I don't just jump up and run a marathon. So get out there and start flexing those conversational muscles and you'll get better at it. Lastly, building a support system. Networking isn't just about exchanging business cards. It's about cultivating genuine relationships and building a tribe a tribe of support. Finding those women that want you to succeed no matter what. They're not backbiting. They're not gossiping. They're not talking bad about you. They're not jealous of your success. They're not jealous when you are having a great day with your kids or saying that you are loving life as a woman, as a mother, they're not jealous of that and, and being petty, right? These are women, you find like-minded women who just want you to truly be happy and truly succeed. Attending these gatherings will allow you to create a network of women who cheer you on, offer guidance and uplift you during both the triumphs and the challenges of juggling family responsibilities and your personal aspirations. I cannot tell you how many times, like, my friendships from these women that are in my private coaching community, the Revitalized Sisterhood, I have some incredible conversations with these women. They are there for me when I am down. They are there for me. I turn to them when I really want to talk about the things that are hard in life. I turn to them and talk about the things that I want to celebrate in life and they celebrate with me. They're not upset about anything I say. They are there for me. They support me. Find your people, find your women, find your tribe. If the revitalized sisterhood is not the place for you, find it somewhere else. If I am not the coach for you, find another one. Um, but, But don't stop until you find them. Go spend the money, spend the money. You are worth it. Spend the money and go to retreats, spend the money and go to events, find the free events, just do the work. I promise you what you gain from it and the growth you gain from it is priceless. It's truly priceless. 
All right, ladies, I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to remind you that our annual Revitalize Retreat is happening here in Southern Utah, May 16th through the 19th. <laughs> yeah, question mark. Yes, May 16th, we are going to be here again, another year, beautiful year celebrating each other and having some amazing connections here in Southern Utah. So if you have wanted to join one of those, if you've seen the Instagram posts on them, it is an incredible retreat. We have the best time. You do have to be a member of the Revitalized Sisterhood. So what are you waiting for? Get in here and join it. This is a great place to start flexing those said muscles of communication, cheering each other on, living your best life, being mindful, being intentional, living the life that you absolutely dream of for yourself. I promise you it's happening here in the Revitalized Sisterhood. So if you have been on the fence, get to it. Take action. Let's go. All right, you can find all of that information at revitalizedwomanhood.com. And if any of this resonated with you, please do me a favor and share it with the other amazing women in your life. And please rate and review. It goes a long way to rate and review a podcast.